So it is different from the crustaceans. Um, how the themes of the crustaceans are different from the reptiles, from the fish, from the mammals, from the birds, etc. So, you know, in a way, let us put it like this. That earlier, when, let's say, you were taking rubrics, yes? And when we took the rubrics, uh, you could, with a group of rubrics or a selection of a group of rubrics, uh, come to a repertorial totality. And with the repertorial totality, you could give cantharis, which is an insect, um, or you could give sepia, which is a mollusk, a cephalopod, or you could give lac de floratum, which is a mammal, cow, or you could give tuberculum bovinum aves, which is tuberculum from the birds, or you could give um, medusa, yes, so you could give different groups uh, from the repertorial totality. Today we have worked through understanding the repertory, materia medica, and the natural history of the animal, and finding a much more deeper source pattern of all these different animal remedies. And therefore, what I want to present with is very strong characteristic themes and along with the inclusion of materia medica and repertory, so that you can from the themes very clearly in your patient distinguish a mollusk from a jelly, from a crustacean, from an insect. You could differentiate a mammal, a reptile, a bird, etc., fish, etc. And this differentiation would be very, very systematic, logical, and would not give any chance for doubt and confusion in coming to the remedy. In fact, this has been my focus always in practice and in teaching that we must try and minimize as much error and as much, um, what would you say, um, not confusion, but we must minimize the, uh, the probability of uh, remedy selection. And in fact, the remedy selection must not be, you know, I'm not sure, maybe these rubrics are covering, maybe these themes. No, it should be. This is the case. This is the core pattern of the patient. It completely coincides with the this animal kingdom, under the animal kingdom, this particular subclass, let's say reptilia, under reptilia, let's put crustaceans because I'm going to be teaching crustaceans. Under crustaceans, um, specifically the lobster and not the crab, and these are the rubrics. This is how the patient connected to the source. And by this method, you are very clear of what you're prescribing. If you're clear of what you're prescribing, you're clear of the prognosis and clear of how you are going to help the patient forward. And the patient also sees this confidence in you. And that's very important. Most homeopaths are prescribing. And after they have prescribed, they, pres they, they are still, even after they prescribe, they are still not sure of what they have prescribed and what will be the reaction in the patient. And the patient understands these wipes. What we want is to make the homeopaths so skilled so that they are clear and they're sure of what they're doing. And this confidence is also transferred to the patient and helps in the uh, overall treatment of the patient. Okay, so this was about bringing out themes. Now, I'm going to be also giving you specific themes on the fish remedies in these two days because we've done some work on fish remedies. It's a group which has uh, hardly been explored. So I will also be showing you some cases from the fish kingdom, uh, sub-kingdom, sorry. And uh, we had made a proving of uh, Chelman rostratus, a small coral fish. So I will be bringing you important information of this proving symptoms as well. And this will open you up to a whole new phylum, yeah? The 
the fish phylum and you will be able to know how fish themes are and how fish remedies or fish individuals would present to you in the clinic. So that's about fish remedies. Now in the last few years, I've also worked on relating or making correspondences between the different kingdoms. That is the plant, the mineral and the animal kingdom because I truly believe that the three kingdoms are related to each other. And when you look at the universe and then when you look at our planet, obviously the three kingdoms are connected to each other. For example, plants absorb from minerals and uh, that's their main source of nutrition. And plants make their own food, but they need the mineral kingdom. Plants are also made of minerals. Similarly, humans are also made of various minerals. What we all, what we all have in our body is sodium, potassium, chloride, yeah? magnesium, calcium. So we are made of minerals as well, but the animals eat plants as well. So for the existence on this planet, all the three kingdoms are very different from each other in their characteristics, and I agree, but they are also connected to each other in the circle of life. And in the last few years, what I realized in our practice was that this connection can also be seen in your patients. And I started making correspondences between mineral remedies and animal remedies and mineral remedies and plant remedies because of three and plant and animals as well. So all the three kingdoms are in some way related and you can compare the remedies of the three kingdoms with each other. Okay, so there is a specific mineral that corresponds to a specific plant and that corresponds to a specific animal. Now, what we will be, what I will be bringing to you in uh, Bulgaria this year will be correspondences between the minerals and the animals. For example, which mineral, which row corresponds to which animal class? Um, the development of the periodic table is divided into seven stages, but the development in the animal kingdom can also be divided into similar stages and therefore the animals can be compared or the seven different groups that we have made in the animals can be compared very logically to the seven rows of the periodic table. Now this is a very interesting work that we have been doing for the past six to seven years and a lot of people all over the, all over the world whom we have taught or who are following us uh, and following this work have used it in their practice and had tremendous results and response. So this is the first time in Bulgaria that we will be sharing. I will be sharing this with you. Um, I've often been to uh, European countries, the other like Germany, England, uh, Belgium, yeah, uh, and many more. Um, I've also been to um, Hungary and Romania, uh, but this will be the first time that I will be, and some of the Bulgarians who have come to India or who have traveled to Vienna mm -hmm. or Romania mainly have seen some of my work, but this will be the first time that I will be presenting two days of intense work, especially for all the Bulgarians. And I really look forward to meeting all of you I look forward to sharing all these concepts with you and I'm very sure that you will go back with the skills of case taking in the animal kingdom, but you will also go back with a lot of philosophy on the three kingdoms and of course a lot of information and materia medica on various animal phylums that you can use in your practice and reproduce these results on a daily basis. So I really look forward to seeing you all and all the best. See you soon.